long-term equity investments, how do we handle them? Those are investments that we're wanting to hold on to for more than a year. And depending upon uh, whether they're in a marketable security or whether they, the percentage of ownership will determine how we um, account for them. So if we own less than 20% of the outstanding stock and we want to keep something as a long-term investment, then we'll use the available for sale method, which you already know. Isn't that exciting? So AFS, if you own less than 20% of the outstanding stock and call it long-term. If you own between 20% and 50% of the outstanding shares of stock, you will use the equity method. And if you own more than 50% of the shares of stock, in other words, you have a controlling interest, you will consolidate that company with your own when you're doing the financial statements. Thus, sometimes you'll see financials called consolidated financial statements. And if there is no market value to the stock and the, to the securities that you're holding, since there's no market, there's no ability to market to market, so you have to use cost. So those are the methods we'll be going over um, in this part of the video's uh, playlist. So let's get started. Here's what the financials look like. For a long-term investment, notice they're after the current assets, and we have equity method investments and other investments. Now the equity method investments are those that we own between 20 and 50% of the stock outstanding. In other words, we have a strong interest, but maybe not a controlling interest. The other investments would include um, stock or investments that have no market value, meaning we'll use the cost method, or they may be investments that we own less than 20% of the outstanding shares, and those would be accounted for using AFS, or Available for Sale Securities. When we look at the um, OCI, we can see here that we've got unrealized gains and losses from the avail um, available for sale securities, which could get involved in that other investment account, marking the um, accounts that have a market to their market value at the end of the year. And we can also see we've got comprehensive income for non-controlling interests that used to be called minority interest, and that's where we um, own a sizable chunk of the stock, more than 50%, but we don't own 100%, so we have some minority shareholders that also um, are involved, and so this is where we can back them out. So this is uh, a consolidated, oh, look at that word, um, balance sheet for Coca-Cola. All right, some terms that you need to know. Whereas there's three categories of equity, meaning you own stock investments. Um, there are passive investors. Those are folks that own less than 20% of the outstanding voting stock. We'll use the mark-to-market method if the shares are readily available and marketable. Otherwise, you use the cost method and we'll go over that in a little bit. If you own between 20 to 50 percent of the outstanding voting stock, you'll use the equity method, and those are called influential investors. And then if there's, you own more than 50 percent of the outstanding voting stock, you're called a controlling investor, uh, and you use equity method during the year, and then at the end of the year, you will consolidate um, and mush all the various companies together into a consolidated financial statement. All right, just to review, to recap, 
if we own less than 20%, we'll use the mark to market method at year end, which means, um, and if there is no market, then we'll use the cost method. Remember always that if dividends are declared and paid, the dividend income is included on the income statement, and at the end of the year, we're going to have unrealized holding gains and losses uh, for uh, available for sales securities that st show up in the shareholder's equity. If they're trading securities, they are on the income statement. And if your securities are not readily available, you'll use the cost method, and then you only use steps one and two because there is no market to write it up or down to, so the only time you ever write a cost-based um, security down is if there's a permanent um, impairment of it or you sell the investment.